Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and knife collecting and to hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, Tops makes a compact version of a classic, some cool new stuff in my state of the collection, and then we take a look at 10 affordable knife gems. Uh, mostly folders, but a couple fixies. Uh, but first, you know what we do here first. It's a pocket check. Uh, let me show you what I've been carrying today. Some favorites right here, um, and uh, one of them quite useful that I kind of forgot about. Okay, but first up is the Zero Tolerance 0640. Designed by Ernest Emerson, this is a uh, modern take, a contemporary take by Zero Tolerance on the Viper 5, I believe it is. The uh, Emerson Viper 5, way back from the early days before he was a big uh, production company. He was making the Specwar line of knives. Um, this knife is great. This is universally loved, even by non-Emerson and non-ZT people. They seem to love this knife. I love it too because it sort of fits in that category uh, with the Sabenza, with the VSEP, with um, I see it more as a uh, a classic uh, knife and design, more in the line of the Chris Reeve knives, Sabenza, than other Emerson knives. Um, but that's just me. And uh, I this knife did require a little bit of tweakage when I got it. Of course, uh, came with the uh, the split pea soup green carbon fiber, which made a lot of people bristle. Uh, I uh, initially claimed that I liked it, and actually I liked the color, and then realized it's just the carbon fiber. You know, I'm very picky about carbon fiber. So uh, replaced the scales with these natural canvas micarta scales. Uh, I think the whoever made these scales uh, made the wrong side, or, or used the wrong side of the, of the, <laughs> of the micarta it kind of looks like the pasty side but um in any case very grippy very nice and actually it's uh, has definitely taken on my my hand patina like most emerson designs this is an incidental back flipper or a front flipper let me show you here on this uh camera you can usually just grab the tang of most emerson knives and front flip them and so Incidental front flipper, great knife, very sharp. The one criticism that this knife tends to get is that it's a little thick behind the edge, um, but it is very, very sharp. So this is a main candidate for me for a regrind. Uh, I'd love to get this thing hollow ground uh, just to make it super, super keen. Uh, I'd also like to do that to my Spartan Harzi, but something, something about the Harzi, I don't wanna, I wanna leave it unmolested, so. And, Maybe I'll just stick to the ZT0640. So that's what I got uh, in my front right pocket uh, on my belt today. Uh, yes, on my belt, not in the waistband. This is one of the few knives I wear on my belt. Uh, up front, horizontally. Uh, it stashes away very nicely. This is the Bastinelli Knives Anomaly, and this is a custom one. And that that means that means he takes the blade, and I... Uh, I requested a maroon Sukamaki wrap, and then he makes his sheath. This is not the Fox Knives sheath. The blade is still made in Fox uh, by Fox. This is N690CO, and as you can see, it is a very Bastinelli-style design with the finger ring. Uh, but unlike many other designs, he, he <laughs> first of all, uh, Bastian Cove is, is very adept with the use of a karambit and a ringed knife like this, so he recognizes that when you put a ring on a knife that you're supposed to put your finger through, you have to cant it uh, forward from the handle itself. It can't be straight in line with the handle or you're going to have a weird grip. Uh, so I really, uh, this is one of the few ringed things that uh, I feel very confident with. Um, I don't know, uh, after a few conversations, the ring makes me feel like I might break my finger if I needed to really use it. But uh, in any case, this this knife works great. Whoops, sorry about that. This knife works great without the ring. You can just uh, cap, cap the pommel, cap the ring with your thumb uh, and use it. Of course, you can see I got this one because it is a Pakal style blade with the tip down and the edge in. And it came in a line of four anomaly knives uh, with four different blade shapes same handle 
a collaboration with the great Doug Micarta. Doug Micarta. Doug Markaida. I'm sorry. I do that sometimes. Doug Markaida. Um, <clears throat> Filipino martial arts legend and uh, uh, what do you call it? Judge on Forge and Fire. Okay, here we go. Last up, uh, let's get rid of the uh, of the of the frog in my throat. Last one here is the Kiridashi from Cold Steel Knives. Just an inexpensive little utility knife uh, based on the Japanese utility knife, the Kiridashi. This thing is insanely useful. Now I used this all last weekend. That's what inspired me to pop it in my pocket uh, these last few days here this week. I used this over the weekend whilst making Kydex sheaths. Uh, I'm not going to show this one off because I really jacked up the holes. So uh, it's utilitarian. This is my knife anyway. Uh, but in any case, I used this knife a lot in making the Kydex. I scored the Kydex. I score the Kydex and then break it on the seam. This worked great for that. And uh, also used that excellent uh, Warncliffe style tip to... Um, clean off the edges of, of the drilled holes. You know, you drill into Kydex and it kind of pushes up a, a little seam around the hole. And this was used to carve that off. This is just a great little utility knife. I ended up putting a, a little three knot uh, snake knot cord on there um, just for a little extra. It's about a three and a half finger knife but what a great and inexpensive utility knife strops up very easy easily that's 4116 krupp steel i think and uh Kruppstahl. and it works very well it does dull pretty quickly but man alive does it strap back to razor sharp quite quickly so that's what i'm carrying today the 0640 by zero tolerance knives the anomaly uh by Bastinelli knives and Doug Markaida and the Cold Steel Kiridashi folder. Let me know what you were carrying today. Uh, I am interested. I love to hear what people are carrying. This is a way that I get to find out uh, about new knives. Uh, you all are my source uh, and you're my mavens. And a maven, it's a funny word. It sounds, it always makes, it, it always makes me think of maiden. But a maven is someone who's got the knowledge first and then passes it along to everyone. And uh, that's how I find out about stuff. So let us know. Call the listener line 724-466-4487 or leave a comment below. What is in your pocket? All right. <clears throat> Before we go to Life Knife News, I want to show you a new purchase uh, that is, uh, well, it's exciting to me. Uh, this is an old hickory ice pick. You know, lately I've been showing off these dice picks I've been making. Uh, little 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 pocket defense tools or utility tools. I mean, it's funny. Uh, there are a lot of uses for a sharpened, pointy bit of steel. Uh, and then I add the dice, you know, on the die on top, just for a bit of class uh, and something to hold on to. But this is an actual ice pick. And you know, Jim, the producer of this show, you all know Jim, I don't have to say that. Jim has an epic collection of ice picks. And I've always thought that was pretty damn cool and quite gangster because uh, uh, Jim was never into knives before um, before meeting me, really, but he was into ice picks. And there's something very appealing about them. And someday, if he ever decides to to offload his ice pick collection, I might I might offer I, I might put an offer up because these are not only, you know, have the menace of, uh, you know, the classic mafia dispatch tool, but also they were a, a, a part of daily life. Back in the day, everyone had ice picks because you got a block of ice to put in your ice box and uh, you also chipped off ice with it. And, um, you know, there's all sorts of uses for an ice pick, uh, even even with ice machines. I worked in plenty of restaurants, ice machines when that when you get the or when you have to uh, uh, defrost a fridge, an ice pick comes in handy. All homes should have an ice pick. So I was like, are they still making them? You know, I know I know there are a lot of people out there who are making them custom. Uh, I was speaking to Bastinelli before. He's got a really cool ice pick. You got to check out. But this one um, was right on uh, right on Amazon. This and I discovered a whole bunch of others, uh, many others that have little sheaths or uh, you know other other halves of the wood that they slide into. Uh, this is just naked like this. I kind of like it. I I think it should be duct taped under a desk or something um, just for safety or you know, I'll probably leave this one in the kitchen because actually it will come in handy for a lot of things. Uh, but uh, old hickory, old hickory ice pick. 
so Jim, let me know. Let me know if you're ever going to get rid of that ice pick collection. You might have a buyer right here. Okay. Uh, one way that you can help me get more ice picks is to, uh, is to join us on Patreon. Uh, we have a, an upcoming knife giveaway. We're going to be giving away the petrified fish. Uh, P F dash P dash O two, I think is what it is what it's called. A very catchy name, but it's a beautiful knife. Uh, and that's one of the perks you get as a gentleman junkie on uh, our Patreon uh, account there. So uh, three levels of support. I think I'm going to add a ludicrous level uh, and uh, and that will make four levels of support. But the way you do it is you go to the knife slash Patreon and there you will get uh, plenty, plenty of extras, including interview extras. That's my favorite offering. Uh, so, yeah, the knife slash Patreon. And, and that's where you can get this all done. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. One of my favorite Topps knives that I never got was the Silent Hero or is the Silent Hero. The Silent Hero is a knife that was uh, designed initially about 10 years ago uh, by a, a South African gentleman, Anton Duplessis. And he's a, a guy who worked in anti poaching interdiction. So he would uh, he'd go out and find people who were poaching rhinos and elephants and and I don't know handle them somehow I don't know what they did arrest them or or whatever but uh this guy had a serious mission and needed a serious knife and tops made the silent hero I always loved the knife it's a leaf shaped uh sort of drop point a beautiful uh, shape large thick um quarter inch steel six inches uh six and a half inches seven inches so kind of a big beefy knife so they just took this very popular knife and made a shorter version of it uh they're calling it the silent hero four and it has the same profile of the knife the same beautiful handle um and same shaped blade same finger guard with the with the notch in it so you can uh, strap it to a a spear uh, strap it to a half to make a spear they just shrunk it down to a uh, four and a half inch uh, knife and i really am excited by this because uh, you can see here that they have uh, if you can see it they have uh, the full uh, full bellied blade the same shape drop point same thumb ramp everything about it and it's just shrunk down they have it in scout style uh, carry in a sheath here that just looks i don't know it looks perfect it, it looks like uh the perfect version of this knife for me because they have eliminated a, a finger choil up front yeah there we go that thing is that's a great looking setup for carry but they've eliminated the finger choil which i always thought was a little bit of wasted space uh and have made it 100% carryable. This almost looks like you could conceal it. Uh, they're using a thinner blade stock too, uh, which is which is good for the shrink down. It's about 30% smaller, uh, and and they have also uh, continued to use the 1095 steel with the traction coating. So this thing is a pure win, I think. Um, you've got the great tried and true tops uh, 1095 and their heat treat and their traction coating. You have this awesome. Uh, Anton Duplessis design, but you have it all in a package that is a little bit more everyday carryable and certainly more uh, utilitarian all the way around. Uh, that other knife, the Silent Hero at 6.38 inch uh, blade is a, a beast. And uh, um, this I think is a welcome um, shrink down of it. So anyway, I, I don't know. I'm always, every knife I, I talk about here uh, on the state of the, I mean, on the um, Knife Life News, I say, I want to get it. I want to get it because that's kind of how I am. And when I talk about it and I start seeing how wonderful the thing could be, uh, I get locked on. I probably will not get this. I am being 100 percent honest. There are so many knives I want out there. Uh, but <clears throat> if this were to fall out of the sky uh, into my lap, I would keep it and use it. Awesome looking knife. Uh, the Silent Hero for next up is another awesome looking knife that i uh, would love to have in my collection but uh, most likely will not uh, get is the <laughs> wee knives quixotic uh named after don quixote and uh, you gotta you gotta go to knife news and and check out uh benjamin schwartz's write-up of this he he's just such a good writer and uh 
so he 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 ties in uh, Don Quixote in, into his uh, review of the knife uh, quite adeptly. He's a very literate man, and he can take any knife, even a knife like this, which is beautiful. But you know, I, have we seen it before? No, we haven't. You know, there there are some differences to this wee knife, but it looks like a wee knife, and he can take this wee knife and make it sound brand new and exciting. So you got to go over to Knife News and check them out. This is an M390 sculpted titanium frame lock, uh, but it does have some pretty cool futuristic, uh, I don't know, design cues to it, especially that little notch on the back of the blade. For some reason to me, uh, that's like modern ergonomics. It's like uh, extrema ratio. When you look at their knives and they're, they look all blocky and weird and squared off and the choils are all sharp looking, really, those are all extremely ergonomic knives uh out of out of ergonomic studies they came up with these uh shapes and when you put them in hand you can see that they are actually quite comfortable but it looks modern you want to see a round curvy shape for you to place your thumb in but that little notch on the back of the blade just forward of the jimping i bet is the perfect place to lay your to lay your thumb okay so you're you're getting all the usual uh wonderful we build great we design this is an in-house design and options so this is another one of those cases where if you like the design i'm sure you'll be pleased with it uh you never had a bad we knife um and so I, I i imagine if you like the design this will be no exception so look forward to this the the uh we knife quixotic i gotta be honest with you uh i'm always honest i think the most exciting things happening with that company are happening in in the Civivi area, uh, I feel like they're cheaper or, or they're less expensive to produce. Therefore, they can be a little faster and looser, and uh, be a little more adventurous with their designs and a, and a little more, I guess, plentiful. Then again, I say that a lot of Civivis look like a lot of other Civivis, but I think to me that's where the interesting stuff is happening uh, with that brand. All right, still to come, we're going to take a look at uh, some of the new knives in my collection uh, that have just uh, come in, uh, and then a couple loaners, and then we will take a look at 10 affordable gems. These are knives that uh, have been in my collection, uh, some of them for a long time, that are just must-haves at the price, I gotta say. So uh, we'll take a look at those all coming up right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I have been very disciplined. I've been a very, very good boy recently. I have not been spending too much. I've been saving my shekels because, as I've been hinting at, I'm, I'm working on a little project here. It's going to take a while. Um, and no, I'm not having a knife produced in China. Uh, it's something else, and it's something exciting. And... Um, I'm going to bring it bring it out at some point when it's ready to bring out, uh, but it does require a little bit of money, so I have not been buying uh, knives like usual. Or I should say acquiring knives like usual. But uh, recently, I've had a little bit of a windfall here, so I'm going to I'm going to show off a couple of these cool things that uh, <clears throat> recently came in. As I am wont to do, I was lurking around blade forums. Um, I'm sometimes I just I feel it. I'm like, there's going to be something there. I should go check. And when I mean something there, of course, there's always something there I want to buy. But I mean like that something that I've always wanted that is hard to get. Uh, sometimes my spidey senses perk up and they did this past week. And I found a knife I've wanted for a long time uh, that I passed on early along. Gave I had one of these and I gave it to my, my buddy uh, at the time. And who knows what happened to it. Uh, this is the Cold Steel Peacekeeper 2. And I, I got this from a guy who was selling a bunch of uh, uh, discontinued cold steels. This is one of their daggers, a uh, second generation dagger, I'll say, because their first generation dagger was the Taipan. And then they came out with this, the Peacekeeper version, which was much more affordable. And, and then now they have this, some other Safekeeper or something. Can't remember what those are called. But uh, yeah, you get your, your Securex sheath with this kind of cheesy clip. I wish it was removable. I mean, it is removable if I permanently remove it, but but here's the blade, just a beautiful Aus 8 uh, double hollow ground or quad hollow ground blade. Uh, when you get their somewhat inexpensive or 
yeah, affordable daggers these days, they are uh, chisel ground. So one side will be uh, flat ground, almost actually it's concave on this side. And then you will get the double bevels on the other side. Also cool. I really like that too. But this is more of a slasher, more of a, um, I mean, this knife is a slasher. Look at this. It, both sides of this blade have substantial belly. This is how you make a dagger. You make a dagger like this because it is way more versatile. Um, that's not to say that other daggers that don't have bellies are bad, but I like this because you get incredible thrust. And even this one has a bit of a dulled tip, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, only in how it looks because I've, I've rammed this through a number of materials at this point. I've only had this for two days, but I was like, is this point going to be a problem? You know, am I going to be able to, you know, do I need to send this off to, to Neve to get the tip fixed? And, and I thrust it through a couple of uh, cardboard boxes and other things here. And I, I determined that that diamond tip in cross section is pretty damn sharp, even if it doesn't come to a super needle tip. So I think I can, I can hold off on that for a while. Interesting about this knife, I have the trainer version of the big brother of this knife. And the handle on the big brother, as you might expect, is a little more um, substantial so that in saber grip, you get a little bit more um, coming out of the pom from the pommel area. Here in a saber grip, that, that nice rounded pommel is nestling in my palm, which is fine. I'm just not used to the feeling of having a biggish blade like this five and a half inch blade um kind of teetering on the end so you have what you do with a dagger anyways is or you know oftentimes when you when you grip a knife in this saber grip you're holding it kind of like a drumstick the real pinch point is between your thumb and your pinky and then and then here you get a little bit of hinging and um and so you can get snap cuts and that kind of thing this knife to me uh, makes me feel most confident in either a straight up hammer grip, which I'm not too fond of with a dagger because my instinct is to put my thumb on the back uh, of the blade here. So with this safekeeper or peacekeeper two, the most comfortable grip for me is reverse grip. And, uh, I don't feel, I don't, I, I feel 100% secure on there. You've got a nice Coke bottle, um, and uh, in cross section and, in profile, nice Coke bottle, a uh, contour to hold on to, great place to place your thumb and plenty of room. So I don't feel like I'm coming off the handle like I might a little bit with the saber grip. So I really think this thing is optimized for this kind of fighting style. Um, you know, okay, dagger, I love daggers, you know, but they do have different qualities. This does remind me a bit of, uh, say my, my, um, Randall, which has a nice, nice belly to it as well. Okay. That, that is my cold steel peacekeeper too. a really excellent, uh, excellent purchase. Glad to have this in the collection. I wish they never discontinued it. Okay. Next up, this thing is interesting. Now over a year and a half ago, I'd say we did an article on this show about this next item. And, um, a little while later, uh, the, their head of their company, Sean Hoyman reached out to me and said, uh, I'm I'm finally ready to show you this thing. Can I send one to you? And I said, oh, hell yes. And he did. And I just did a, an unboxing of it. It is uh, right here. This is the Bone Daddy Blade Works Axis. And this thing is one substantial three-eighths inch hunk of D2 steel. But what is it? It is a hand axe slash knife slash regular axe okay so this thing uh is is based on okay all right let me let me let me back up here set this down and say that when they were designing when sean hoyman was designing this knife it was his his goal was to kind of go back to the ancient concept of the knife the knife being an all-around tool, something that you would lash to a stick and use as an axe, something that you would take off and that you would use for skinning, something that you could use as a weapon in hand. And this fits the bill straight across. You take it, excuse me, this could be your one tool going into the wilderness uh, for, for, uh, for wood processing, for 
all sorts of camp chores and survival chores. All right, so let's look at this uh, axis here. So, of course, the first thing I do when I I see this and I pick, I'm like, oh, these are nucks. This is like the ultimate pair of nucks. And yes, this is one of the many many grips you can hold it in. And if you're holding it in this, this is definitely a sort of a combative grip, but it's also a great carving grip, okay? And then you can move your fingers around and you come back here to this sort of trigger. This sort of trigger here is meant that you can hold, is meant to be there to hold on to the back end of this axis like this, and then you can do light chopping with it. It's amazing because it, uh, it's amazing how forward heavy it is in this hold. You're only holding to this tail end, but it's very secure with that trigger. And you could do some uh, light hand chopping with this. Then what you can do, and as you can see here, milled out in the center, uh, after this double edged blade, you have this forward edge sharp and this lower edge sharp. And behind that, in this area, you can see there is a milled in channel, slightly milled in here to accommodate a split haft. So you take a stick, you're out in the wilderness, you find a uh, stick that fits or a stick that works. Uh, you, you split the top, square it off, split the top, and then slide it up over the axe head. And then about two inches you leave about two inches up top there and then with paracord or some other strong lashing uh, cord you wrap this thing uh, through the holes on top on bottom and then you have an axe it is really cool they have an, an awesome video you can check out at bone daddy blade works uh, where they show the use of this thing and uh here's something i thought of i was like you know I, I, this little trigger thing uh, back here is serves a lot of purposes. It's there, of course, as uh, a way to encapsulate your hand and keep it in in this grip. It's a way to uh, use it as a as an actual hand axe because you can you can manipulate it there and hold onto it there. But also, it's a way to stabilize the blade when it's attached to the haft. So when it's here with uh you know even if you have tons of paracord when you're chopping it's going to start to wobble on the haft this trigger here uh forces well this trigger here stabilizes it because the wood has to go between the trigger and that little finger guard um so i'm i have to obviously uh, do a lot do a lot of work with this thing out back i'm going to take it into the back <laughs> into the back i live in the suburbs i have i do not like have some some uh, sprawling wilderness behind me, but it is my wilderness. So I go out back and I chop what I chop and I cut what I cut and I have to clean what I have to clean. But we also do these uh, family uh, fire night pits at uh, fire pit nights. And this one, this is where I'm going to try this first. I want to see how it does with that, with the chopping. I'm going to make an ax out of it. I'm going to do all this on video because I, I need to, uh, I think this will be a cool one. I'll have my daughter be the cinematographer and, uh, and I want to I want to show the different uses of this. I'm fascinated by this in its uh, you can even see, um, you know, the some of the surface treatment here is evocative of the idea that this is like the ultimate first tool knife axe. Um, well, it's it looks roughly hewn. It looks primitive, but it's really modern and well considered. And uh I'm very excited about this thing. <laughs> I keep calling it a thing. It's the axis. It's a hand axe, but it's also kind of a knife. It's also kind of a, a weapon. It's definitely an axe and a hatchet. Um, and it's really sharp, <laughs> by the way, really sharp. And plus I stropped it. So it's extra sharp, extra, extra. Comes with this sheath right here. I'll show you here. And um, it also comes with a really cool box that fits exactly in a medium um, or in a in a small priority box. And it comes with a carabiner and some lashing and directions and some other cool stuff. So you got to check this out. The Axis Bone Daddy Blade Works, or by Bone Daddy Blade Works, they uh, successfully uh, um, funded this with a Kickstarter about a year ago, and this is the result. It is very cool. Check it out. All right, next up. I'm so happy to have this knife in my collection. Um, excuse me. 
Dave of This Old Sword uh, Blade Reviews sent me one to check out. And as he did, the one that I had just ordered arrived. So this one is mine. It looks exactly like his, though I'll bring it out for a size comparison. Just kidding. This is the pret -a -tout. Ready for anything. That's French for ready for anything. pret -a -tout. Uh, this is by K. Maxrom. The design is by K. Maxrom. He was uh, a guest on on, uh, on the Knife Junkie podcast recently, and he's a very interesting dude, uh, lives in France, and I've been following him for years, his custom work, and then when he started uh, going into production with, with Concept and with um, uh, Kaiser and a couple of others, I was very excited because I love the style of his blades most of his knives have this thumb swale on the back that that just it's a signature of his and it's also a very very ergonomic um detail so i love the way it looks love the way it feels and i am just so impressed with concept knives i gotta say i love concept knives i love them so much that dave and i were texting uh back and forth and he said oh did you see white mountain knives has an exclusive of the pret tattoo in uh in my carta and i said hang on a second and i went over and i bought it and i came back and i said yeah i saw that <laughs> thanks dave thanks for uh again being a maven and letting me know uh this knife i've been carrying since i got it only several days ago but oh man it cuts great this tanto shape um this Tanto blade is ground up to that fuller, which, by the way, is my favorite way to open this. i got to switch hands, though. Uh, and it's very thin and very slicey. Even though it's uh, it's not hollow ground, it's uh, full flat, or it's a uh, flat ground. But, man, it's very thin and very sharp. And that tip is similar to the Chris Reeve Knives Tanto tip, except it's got a secondary cutting edge. It's not a zero ground uh, bevel there. Great action, very light titanium pocketed out there. You can see uh, it's got a nice sculpted titanium pocket clip. I like that it's black because I I prefer dark, even if it doesn't go with the rest of the knife, I prefer a dark pocket clip because I prefer a, a more discreet carry. The one misstep on this knife are these thumb studs. They're They're not very friendly. I mean, okay, so if I grip them both, with my finger and my thumb, I can get them to come out. But just the thumb, I can get it to come out, but it comes out at a weird angle and it's so close to the, I don't know, it just doesn't, it's my least favorite way of opening this knife. I like I like the fuller middle finger flick. I like the flipper, thumb studs. Ah, see, oftentimes I'll do it and it's like, oh, it hurts. You know, I'll, I'll try and deploy it doesn't come out and my thumb just ends up hurting so i got to use the finger and the and the thumb on this uh i could have done without the thumb stud altogether it's not a blade stop and it's not a very effective thumb stud so that said that's the one dish i have on this otherwise what an outstanding knife now the preda 2 uh white mountain exclusive i got i got the clip point you know for variety uh, but I love this Tanto shape, very uh, much based on the Chris Reeve knives, Umnum Zahn Tanto. Um, I got I got confirmation from that uh, from K. Maxrom himself. He said it was a little bit of an ode to that. He loves that shape, as do I. And, uh, well, I think he did a capital job. Let me just show you real quick. This is the other uh, K. Maxrom concept I have. This is the Pelican. Great knife. I wish this this were as large as this. Um, that'd be excellent. Very ergonomic also, even though it looks much more angular, but a great, great knife. Concept is just killing it. They're doing a beautiful job. Okay, speaking of White Mountain Knives, this is one that Dave, this old sword, uh, Blade Reviews, sent me to check out. He knows I've been kicking myself in the buttocks for not... Uh, for not jumping on this when it was uh, there, but it's the White Mountain exclusive XL Kaiser Beg Lighter. And we all know that it comes with the button lock, which makes it extra fidgety and extra cool. Here, I'll show that off a little bit. It has great action. Um, you know, the development of the button lock flipper was kind of a, a slow and halting one, I'd say. Uh, but it seems like company, and I think it was spearheaded by um, maybe ProTech, 
we'll say, and then and then some other, and then Kaiser and we jumped on early-ish. But it, it kind of seemed like it took a while for people for designers to um, get it right. But man, they've gotten it right, and and now uh, you know, like the Civivi that I have, the um, Cogent, and this, and 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 the Malibu, and all these all these flipping button locks or button lock flippers, I should say, are just, they're a whole new genre of knife I have to get into. In other words, I gotta get, I, I gotta, I gotta get this. I gotta try these out because they all have a different feel now. And uh, if you like shark lock uh, fidgeting, if you like axis uh, fidgeting, you gotta get into button locks. So this thing is, as you might expect, it is XL. It is a four inch blade. I love it. And you know, um, I usually, say that drop point blades are kind of boring this one is a really really nice looking drop point uh it's almost a spear point but that point is north of the center line beautiful swedge uh full flat ground nearly full flat ground you have a tiny flat right there but thin behind the edge nice cutter 154 cm so so the preta 2 i was talking about from white mountain knives is basically in this setup it's going to come in 154 cm with this uh, kind of canvas micarta. And so I, I like that. That I guess this is sort of the White Mountain Knives exclusive dress code. You know, like uh, like like uh, Blade HQ has the Jade G10 and M4 dress code for their exclusives. And, um, you know, that everyone has their exclusives and their and their styles i think that's what the white mountain knives will be i guess or is um very very cool knife i do like that the i need to get a bag lighter in my life either this xl or the small one the very small one um but i like the way the liners here sit proud of the handle of the handle scales it feels right feels good to me i don't know about in the cold though whether that or, or the extreme heat whether that will be uncomfortable you know just to have the metal going all the way around conducting heat or cold but that is obviously sp splitting hairs and that you know as far as criticisms go especially for me someone who's not out there you know in the ice cold or the blazing heat using his knife to uh, it's not an issue for me i would just go inside and select a different knife uh but for someone who is an adventure seeker or someone who is out there, uh, I don't know. I don't know how how feeling the metal um, would be in extreme situations. But anyway, you might not have this knife in an extreme situation or better better said, in any extreme situation, whatever knife you have is just fine. I don't know how I got off on that tangent, but this is a very cool knife. Dave, thanks for uh, loaning it to me. And uh, I'm just going to fidget with it and drive my family nuts for a couple more days and i'll have it in the mail once i've shot my video forthcoming sir and also from him the last uh, in the state of the collection is from bastinelli Ugh, love his designs so this is this is a, a fox knives uh knife so it's branded fox knives but designed by bastinelli so oftentimes uh it's a bastinelli knives manufactured by fox this is the other way around this is called the gecko uh, funny spelling of gecko but this is gecko and it is a pure fighting knife i mean you could definitely use this as a uh, you know open boxes and stuff but look at this slender tanto blade and it's attached to this arcing handle that presents the blade at such an angle <clears throat> whew, excuse me my voice is changing uh it presents the blade at such an angle that uh the tip and the sub tip are right below your fingers. So you're getting some nasty slashing and thrusting uh, capabilities with this. Um, you can place that tip. I'm, I'm trying to think, would this be good for like these kind of utility draw cuts? And I'm just thinking no, because of, because of that angle. But that angle makes this a great slasher. What a comfortable handle. This is a black canvas micarta. Of course, black usually looks, or is it green? I guess it's green canvas micarta. It's hard to tell sometimes. Um, but you've got this very comfortable arcing banana-shaped handle that comes down and terminates in this really nice thumb place 
with very fine jimping. And the front of this thumb place, I'm going to call it that because it's not ramping up. So, okay, thumb ramp. I guess that's the accepted parlance. Uh, right here in the front, that scoop is just enough scoop to wave this open off your pocket. So in order to get that kind of action that you could wave off of such an unextreme uh, hook there, the action, they had to tune the detent accordingly. So this knife, yes, it does come out nicely on bearings, but you can easily make it fail. Here, let me try it again. Well, I mean, you can, maybe not so easily, but you can make it fail. The detent feels a little light on this, a little lighter than I would prefer if this were a straight up uh, flipper. But again, it's not a straight up flipper. It's got two methods of deployment, uh, waving or flipping. So they had to accommodate both. So if you get this knife and you feel that detent and it feels a little light to you, and it sticks in your craw, Shane, uh, just be sure to wave it open and you'll see why uh, it's doing that. You can also use that wave to open it on your adversary, which I've seen Doug Markaita do, Markaita, uh, but you can also use your thumb. Eh, that's kind of awkward. If you have big, giant, long Sasquatch thumbs, you can open it uh, just by grabbing that front portion. Very cool knife this gecko is. Uh, I want more Bastinelli in my life. I just, everything he designs, I think is elegant, beautiful, and, and, and deadly looking. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, Dave. Oh, oh, by the way, I didn't mention this is a titanium frame lock with a very nice deep carry pocket clip set up for khaki carry. Look at that. Look at the angle of that clip, huh? All right. So next up, let's take a look at 10 affordable gems under a hundred bucks. There are many of them out there, as I just discovered, because uh, this past week I was playing, you know, I'm cooking dinner. My daughter's like, truth or dare? I'm like, dare. She says, I dare you to go downstairs and give me a knife out of your cabinet. And I was like, fine, because I know I have a knife in in the cab, uh, you know, in my in my thing to give her. Um, but she's like, but it has to be a folder. And I was like, oh, hmm. So we looked and I couldn't quite find anything that was appropriate. Uh, she wanted a red handle too. And obviously it's got to be small and it has to be a lock she can undo. So I was looking on Amazon and found that there are millions of knives that fit this description. But are they gems? I don't know. There are, there are a lot that fit the same pattern. But these 10 uh, are ones that I've had, some of them for a while, and just know that they are worth the, the money. So. Let's start with Finch knives. We all know I love Finch knives for their charm, for their design, for their best tech build, uh, or uh, Q QSP build, I'm sorry. And look at this. This one, the Cimarron, this is kind of their largest, or the largest I have of theirs right now, with a blade at just under three and a half inches, 3.4 inches. This thing is only $89. And this is a 14C28N blade, very sharp, nicely thin, and uh, I love the handle. The blade completely disappears in that handle. You've got G10, uh, comes in four different versions, all based on different color combinations common in camping gear. Here you have gray and yellow. There's an orange and olive drab. There's a black and red, and there's a blue and Kelly green. They're all beautiful looking again charming uh, subtle you know you look at it like this it looks like a plain gray knife and then you just turn it a little bit ah, and then you see that shock of yellow uh so so classy cool subtle and then also you've got this badge here that uh is loom so it glow luminescent it glows in the dark can't really see it here but you have to trust me Great action, great, great action, and a great cutter. Plus, it's got a nice tip for uh, opening up packages and such. That is the Cimarron from Finch Knives. And most Finch Knives are uh, on the uh, other side of $100. So I'm stunned that this one isn't. It is so worth it. Do check out the Finch Knives. Uh, next, another knife that I'm kind of surprised is uh, priced as it is, is the Off-Grid Cayman. I love this knife. This uh, has a really cool look. Uh, that, that extreme clip point blade looks like a Cayman. This looks like the long snout of the smaller crocodilian 
uh, is found in South America. And uh, it bites like one. Ooh, that was corny. It, it really is a nice cutter, though. Uh, you, you can see from this blade that it is saber ground, meaning flat ground only going halfway up. But it's on already thin blade stock. And it's a broad blade. So it comes to a nice thin cutting edge, very sharp. And the point is super acute. Uh, very nice knife. This comes in at 70 bucks. You can go to their website and buy this thing for 70 bucks. And I do recommend you go to their website. Uh, you're, you'll get great prices there and great, great. I mean, you'll get the prices there, but also you'll get great customer service. And and Kerry fulfills each order that comes in and he knows who buys his knives. And I think knives. And I think that that's cool. He sort of creates a community there. Excellent row of jimping up here. Really nice, uh, really nice feel in hand. Perfectly or uh, ergonomic, ergonomic, and uh, great EDC. This is called the Cayman EDC, by the way. One, two, three and a quarter inches, and uh, but you could also use this as a uh, as an all around option. You can use this camping. You could use this EDC. You could use this. Uh, keep this as your self defense uh, secondary option, whatever. Um, just a great knife. It's got that uh, uh, G10. This is kind of where maybe some of the savings come in. The G10 is nice, but it it's you know it's not extra it's not an extravagant handle, excuse me. And uh, the blade steel is D2, very very nicely heat treated D2, at least uh, as far as I can tell. This is definitely a user, and that coating has that coating is quite robust. You can see in some lights you can see a little bit of marring in it from cardboard, but on the whole. It, it's awesome. It's a uh, it's been coated and then stonewashed. So I guess that that gives it a little bit of robusticity. Next up is a Max Chichuk design, and this was a uh, this was a design that uh, was impressive to me when it first came out. And it's got two different blade shapes, and this one was a gift from Dave. And happily, uh, it's this blade shape. I mean, I would love it either way, but. Uh, I love that blade shape. This is the Kubi Vagrant designed by Max Chichuk. You can get a number of different handle colors and the handle color determines the blade shape. The other blade shape is more of a sheep's foot, rounded spine um, with, with a, a slightly straighter cutting edge. Uh, this, I don't know what you call it, but it's a bell. I call it a bellied worn cliff and it's such a useful useful little knife it's a an os whoops os 10 blade and uh flat ground this this swooping action on the spine is just man it's very appealing to me uh excellent jimping really nice ergonomics feels great feels great in the hand i i do like this big finger choil and then uh, aft of the finger choil you have these two or three angles it just goes er, er straight lines but man it feels great this is kind of like what i was talking about about before with extrema ratio sometimes you see angles and you think that's going to be uncomfortable because my body is organic and full of curves but sometimes our curves and our softness nestle into angles almost better uh discuss amongst yourselves <laughs> this uh this uh, thing is os 10 it's on standoffs it's got liners that are nicely pocketed for for lightening and it is extremely useful you get you've got the belly which is always handy but you've got that tip that you can use for these kind of utility draw cuts and uh coming in at what is it three and a quarter also let's see one two just about 3.1 inches or so it's a small knife, but it's it's got a a standard half inch thickness, so you can you can really grip it and use this thing hard. So very happy with this uh, Max Chuck designed um, Kubi Vagrant. Had a couple of Kubis come through here. We gave away the Raven uh, Raven about half a year ago. That knife was awesome too. Uh, so Kubi, they're doing uh, really great work. Next one you're going to be shocked at. Oh. A dramatic pause. You're going to be shocked, but first, a sip of coffee. Okay, uh, this next one, you you never thought you would see this brand on this list, but for twenty bucks, 
this thing is awesome. This is the Gerber Zilch. Now, I say 20 bucks because that's what I paid for it. But when I looked up uh, prices, uh, it's now 25 or, uh, you know, I bought this in person at REI for 20 bucks. You go on Amazon, it's 25. Either way, it's worth it. Um, the Gerber Zilch, it's a... It, this is Gerber turning a corner as far as I'm concerned. It's a, it is not, I don't think it, it came out to very little fanfare and, and I'm not sure it's a knife that, that they think is a flagship knife for them. But to me, this is a platform very similar to the Benchmade bug out. It's about the same size. It's about the same weight. And it feels like it's, it feels about the same in terms of comfort. It's a different shape. You know, it's, a, it's, 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 shallower and rounder you know the the bug out is broader and flatter in hand but this is kind of in i would put it on the same shelf the action is outstanding it's on bearings i'm not on bearings it's on um, washers not even sure what kind i suspect for the price it's on nylon washers but it comes out like amazingly it's got a very well uh, tuned detent and uh the action is is really great without any play. It's very solid, though these uh, GRN handles are quite cheap feeling. Uh, I do feel like if they dressed it up, started uh, upping the materials, this could be a big hit for them. This blade shape is outstanding. You have a nice point there and then a tapered belly and then a long straight. It's a thin blade stock, comes to a very thin, sharp edge. I think Gerber has a winner here. I've said it before. I said it in my uh, review video of this. I haven't heard much from anyone else on this, but I I'd love to know what people think of this. Um, you got that uh, pocket clip. Looks like it could be in an uncomfortable place. It's not because the, the whole handle is so thin. This fits in that little nook right behind the fold of your fingers. And, uh, you know, just get, get some great, great work done with this knife. One thing I hate about this knife, I first thought I thought it was cool. Uh, are these teeth back here? No purpose whatsoever. First of all, they have nice looking standoffs in there already. Those black standoffs look pretty nice. Uh, but what is up with these teeth? What are they for? Oh, I know what they're for. So you can catch all of the lint in your pocket. I mean, all of it. Uh, so that's something they could get rid of. I, I don't think it, uh, I don't think it adds any utility. And I, and I think it's got to be an extra part of the process. So just eliminate that part of the process and uh, make it micarta. And instead of whatever this, I cannot remember the the steel. It is cheese, but uh, it's like a seven seven CR seventeen or something like that. So up the blade steel, up the handle material, but keep the build, keep the action, uh, keep the profile and the design and the blade geometry. And this thing is a winner. So check out the Gerber Zilch. 25 bucks. Uh, if you hate it, you just give it, give it to someone at work. All right. Next up the concept, you know, I was talking about how much I like concept. This is my third concept in, in, uh, the lineup. Second one I've ever owned, uh, a Dirk Pinkerton design, one of my favorite knife designers and makers. This is the main street. Dig this knife. This, this has been, uh, this did a lot of time in my waistband when I first got it. Um, I was out of the fixed blades at that moment. And uh, this was riding in the waistband, uh, replacing the pink broken skull. And it did a great job at that. It's nicely thin, just under a uh, half inch. And this version of it comes in a bunch of different versions. This one, as you can see, has this brown burlap micarta with the black coated 154 cm blade beautiful Warncliffe blade. This comes in a number of colorways. Sorry, I used that expression, but uh, purple and black is my fa favorite besides this, but they have a whole bunch of other uh, handle uh, materials you can choose from. And they have another size. They have the little main street. And a great thing about this, this was from the first run. A lot of us have this from the first run and it says little main street on it. It was a misprint. So that makes this knife worth thousands no i'm just kidding it doesn't really but i like that i have this unique thing it's a it's like my first run ad 10 has the hollow grind and uh I, I don't know i like it so this thing uh 
does have the mini main street as a younger brother at 2.8 inches and uh, just a cool looking, cool looking thing. Looks a lot like the Kaiser shard, the little one. I highly, highly, highly recommend this knife. And at 80 bucks, consider it a steal. Now, uh, this, I, I sort of averaged it at 80. I saw that there are a couple that go above 80 and some that are less, uh, but just about average. That's what I'm doing with all of these prices. So the concept Main Street, very, very nice knife. And again, it comes in like a million different uh, uh, colorways. All right, here we go. Next up, you can still buy these on, on Amazon. I was shocked because I don't, I didn't think they're still making Tangrams. So maybe they made like a 50 million of them and they're still selling them. But you can still get this on on Amazon. And I suggest you jump on it. I was shocked you can still get this. The Tangram Santa Fe, you remember Tangram Knives. It was Kaiser's uh, low end, not low end, Kaiser's budget line. Their Civivi, if you will. Um, but never really took off like Civivi did. And they came out with a number of models and then just kind of let it dangle. Uh, they had a couple of um, Dirk Pinkerton designs. Um, I had one of them and sold it. Very cool uh, stuff here. Uh, one of their big claims to fame when they first came out is that they were using uh, Japanese Akuto steel, which is their, which is analogous to our 440C. Uh, so very inexpensive at $27. I, I paid $25, so it's gone up. Um, and you get this, you can either get it in tan or black. This tan, <laughs> uh, excuse the expression, it's more like baby poop brown, uh, this handle. But it's still, it just feels great in hand. Got really awesome action on, on um, washers and a great blade shape. Thinly ground, everything about this knife is excellent. Jimping, ceremonial at best, but you don't really need jimping on this. I highly recommend it. It's still available. Check out the Tangram Knives Santa Fe. You'll be so happy you did. And while you're there, they have a couple of others. Pick up the Tangram Knives while you still can, because I think they might be going just gone and just selling off stock. And then when it's done, it's done. Next up, uh, my favorite Civivi purchase of the year. I've gotten six. Uh, I've gotten five Civivis this year. And uh, the first Civivi I ever got, the sixth one was a gift two Christmases ago. And uh, but this year I just kind of got fascinated with them. And this one was the one that really took the show, took the cake. This is the Riffle. Uh, I remember when it first came out, I was like, ah, I don't know if I like the way that looks. And the name is goofy. And and then reports started coming back from the trusted voices uh, that this is an awesome knife. So being late to the party always. I, uh, I found one on the secondary market, and man, I just love this thing. Let's start with the handle. The handle, first of all, micarta, you can get it in G10, but the micarta is so nice. It feels really great in hand. Takes on the your personal fill signature very nicely, and the shape of the handle is perfect. It's perfect. It's neutral enough that you can turn it around, you can hold it in any grip and it's going to be comfortable. But the way it curves down towards the pommel, that last quarter of the handle, and then squares off, well, the squared off end is at an angle because the whole handle is at an angle, which gives you the perfect thumb rest if you have to go reverse grip with this for whatever reason, you got to power into something. But if you're not in reverse grip, that's probably how you're going to be using this knife most. It just melts into your hand it's a it's it's an ergonomic dream and so nicely neutral it just goes to show you don't have to put a million choils and and contours and stuff to make a knife really fill the hand fit the hand perfectly awesome flipper action but of course you see that big giant opening this knife is fun to spidey flick if this were mine to redesign i would give a little bit better access to that uh lock bar but it's not a deal breaker i just prefer lock bars that i don't find myself using my thumb nail to close and this one uh not lefty but when i'm righty i find myself using my thumbnail to close it mm -hmm. but you know that's picking nits if ever nitpicking was a thing this is not this is in yeah this is in 14c 28 and 
kind of got a blasted finish and oh does it cut it cuts it is so nice so nice and thin the geometry here is really it's it's a slicer to beat the band so everything about this knife i like even that generic fold over pocket clip is pretty awesome because though it's not inset in the handle it does have flat screws and they do give you a lanyard option right there with that post though it does not uh does not mar the look of the knife uh everyone out there who's making knives please give us lanyard options i am one of those few nerds who prefers it especially on a small knife if you want to hide it that's fine just put a little post in the back uh but i do like I do like a fob or lanyard option. All right, next up is is the Cold Steel Voyager XL. Of course, you can get the Voyager Smalls, and they're even less expensive. Uh, but the Voyager Smalls to me are are uh, they're great knives. I have them in my bug out bag and stuff like that. But they're they're a little too thick for daily carry for the length uh, for at a four inch blade. This has a five and a half inch blade, so. I don't mind the bulk uh, of the knife, but but this one is coming in at 85 bucks. Again, like that's five and a half inches of, in this case, OS 8 steel, but now they make them with OS 10. And OS 10 is a really excellent blade steel, I have found out through my um, Formax Scout. The Voyager series, uh, all full flat ground, except for the new drop point, which is almost fully flat ground. Very thin behind the edge, but robust cutters. Uh, this is about an inch and a quarter broad and full flat ground. And when you get to the, get to that edge, it's super thin, super sharp. But we're looking at a five and a half inch knife with a with a about seven inch handle for eighty five bucks. This thing is extremely capable. It comes in in tanto vaquero drop point and clip point and of course i look at them because uh in i look at them fondly because i love these giant cold steel knives i love the audacity of them i love the um the weaponiness of them uh if you will but really they are outstandingly useful and utilitarian knives you know if you don't have the capacity to have a bunch of machetes or uh, you know a lot of big outdoor fixed blade knives and stuff but you want something for the outdoors these things are great man they're great they have the the triad lock which is just strong all day long and uh they're built like tanks they are super robust and you get some blade length there and we know from from uh, advanced knife bro you can baton these things not that i would recommend it but in a in a pinch you could i am i am preferential to this blade shape the um the vaquero it's based on the classic turkish yatagan that has that extreme recurve but still places the point center line like a dagger so you can thrust with the surety of a dagger knowing exactly where that point is going but on the slash you're just doing amazing shearing with that incredible recurve so voyager xl the voyager regular uh, uh four inch is also a great knife but again if you want a uh, full bang for your buck for this category i'm going to tell you the cold steel voyager xl and again like i said uh, this is kind of an average price 85 i saw i saw the drop point for 60 i saw the serrated uh, uh vaquero for like 89 or something like that so it does vary uh, but you can get these knives for under 100 bucks um okay penultimate right here of a favorite and a true edc for years this and a warren cliff version of this this is the minimalist the crkt minimalist i have still have it taped to the back of my work id thing here um but i don't i use something else now at work but this knife is incredible for 20 to 25 bucks, uh, 26 bucks, you can get this minimalist and, and it fits every hand. I mean, almost every hand. I, this is one of those knives that, uh, I would pass around at work, especially to the big guys. Check this out. See this tiny little knife. Yeah. This, this is part of how I get people into knives. See this tiny little knife. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think it feels like? Well, I, don't, I don't think I can. And you give it to them and they put it in their big giant sausage finger meat meat paws and boom 
they're like, whoa, this locks in, man. So this this is like universal. And I remember reading something about Alan Foltz, the designer of the minimalist, and he makes a lot of customs of these years of research, kind of putting it in as many hands as possible and really just coming up with the perfect diameter for these three uh, very committal finger chills. There's no other way to hold this knife, you know. Uh, just light, thin, sharp, excellent, with you all the time utility knives. You can hang it around your neck. It's super light. Or you could just leave it in the sheath and drop it in your pocket. You forget it's there. This thing is a great, great knife to have. I mean, just, just to have it on you, throw it or, or it's in the in the dashboard, whatever, just have these around. I always cut the, uh, the fob off. They come with these cheesy little paracord fobs that, um, you know, fills out the grip a little, but I mean, these choils, these three finger grooves are so deep that you don't need it. Your hand just wraps around it. So I cut those cheesy little things off, but in any case, great knife to have around comes in Warncliffe drop point Tanto Caram a recurve tanto carambit and now a three and a half inch um what do you call it combo grind tanto so i mean these things are awesome you do have to contend with some pretty cheesy steel but this one for instance i bought at walmart in a in a clamshell and i think it's like 5 cr 15 mov or something something pretty cheesy it works for my uses i don't use it all the time so it's always sharp but you can also, if you if you go to your knife purveyors online, you you can find versions of it with higher end steels, I believe. Okay, last up, this is a must, a must, especially if you're American. Uh, but this is a must in any case. It's a knife everyone should have in their collection. If you only have one fixed blade, I know a lot of a lot of viewers and a lot of uh, knife enthusiasts are 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 very dialed into the the folders, but everyone should have at least one fixed blade in their collection. And if you do, it should be this. And it is the USMC K-Bar. Oh, it's a little big for this, uh, this shot I have here. But this one uh, my brother gave to me in 1991, and it was released at the time as a special edition K-Bar where they were take, they dusted off the blueprint and the design from World War II, when uh, when they were making a lot of these and sending out the designs to various makers uh, to 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 get them manufactured for the boys overseas, uh, so that it has the embossed USMC K bar in there. It's got the staples and the stitches, which I love in the sheath. And then let's let's take a look at this beautiful knife. Man, this thing has been with me a long time, a long time, thirty years. Very sharp. Uh, it wasn't very sharp when I got it. I, I definitely hit, made it so. It's got a sharpened clip, which you don't find um, if you're buying a modern day K-Bar. You will not get the sharpened clip. Very nice stacked leather handle. You've got the um, utilitarian stamped downward pointing quillions. That always was curious to me. Why did they Why did they opt to, to point them down? I guess maybe for retention. Uh, it doesn't matter. They're so slightly pointed down, but uh, I always thought it'd be better to have them up. Uh, classic construction of the K-Bar is that you have this rat tail tang going all the way through that you have these uh, leather discs stacked on. And then at the very tail end, it's pinned. This butt cap is placed on there and then a pin is put through here. So it's a very different style um, of construction. K-Bar knife, awesome knife. These days, you can get a USMC K bar with this seven inch blade. Was that seven? Yep. Seven inch blade. You can get one with 1095 Crovan steel, modern uh, construction, still with the uh, with the leather handle, or you can get it with a with injection molded plastic handle. But uh, 85 bucks, 85 bucks. Of course, you can find more expensive ones, and you can find less expensive ones, different sizes, some with serrations, some tanto blade. Um, they have a cool dog head uh, uh, version that we gave away here on the show once. Uh, but you cannot go wrong with K-Bar. It's a great outdoors knife. It's a great fighting knife. It's a great uh, bedside knife, uh, what have you. It's a great out, you know, working in the backyard knife. So every collection should have a K-Bar, I believe, um, or at least should have one fixed blade and that one fixed blade, especially if you live in the United States 
should be a gay bar. All right, I've spoken too long, and I see Jim probably in the background going, "Yes, Bob, you have." Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put it put it down right there and just say uh, these ten affordable gems: the Finch Knives Cimarron at eighty nine, the Off Grid Knives Cayman at seventy bucks, the Kubi Vagrant at sixty bucks, the Gerber Zilch at twenty five, the Concept Main Street at eighty, Tangram Santa Fe you can still get at twenty seven dollars on Amazon, Civivi Riffle fifty five bucks. Cold Steel Voyager XLs, 85, CRKT Minimalist, 26, and then I think the three and a half inches, a little bit more expensive, and then the USMC K-Bar, Fighting Utility Knife, for $85. Uh, please check all of these out. You might, uh, you might really find that you need something like this in your collection for less expensive. All right, so coming up on Sunday, episode 302 of the Knife Junkie Podcast, uh, we talk with Richie B and Lindy Lou. You know them, the Knife Modders. They're the guys and gals, the guy and gal who took my really awesome Monterey Bay Knives Turbo from vanilla to super awesome. So uh, we talk to them. We have a great conversation. They're really fun, cool folks, and I love what they're doing uh, modding knives. Also, check out Thursday Night Knives tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube. You can also check it out on Facebook and Twitch Live. And then you can download the podcast, all your favorite podcast catchers. You got Apple, Google, iHeart, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, and a whole host of others. So there we go. And, of course, <laughs> check out us Check us out on Patreon. You can scan us right there with that cool QR code. All right, I'm going to leave it there. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, please. Do not take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.